Hello everyone, so today we are here to uh, keep our tests on our Ninja slow cooker and uh, pressure cooker as you can see here. It's almost uh, ready to go and uh, today we are going to share a recipe of beef ribs stew. For that we have already here our uh, beef ribs. So uh, to prepare the meat, very very easy. Uh, I will start by trimming the fat. As you can see, it has this cut has a, a generous amount of fat around it. So we will try to make it a bit leaner. Otherwise, the end the end result, the stew will become a bit too fatty. It's not perfect. You don't need. It doesn't need to be. But we have removed quite a bit of the trimmings of the fat trimming. So we trimmed a bit, and it's now much leaner than before. Uh, for this recipe, I like to separate each one of the bones. So, uh, to season the meat, I use a little bit of uh, olive oil. And then uh, just, I don't think that you will give uh, the taste of olive will make a substantial difference in the end product, but it will help a lot the pepper and salt to adhere to, to the meat. So I think that that fact, yes, does, uh, does a little bit of difference. Uh, you could use coarse salt, but it has a, a milder flavor of salt. So since I don't have much time, I'm using the fine sea salt at the moment, which uh, will get to the to the saltiness that I want without needing too much time to penetrate the meat. I also like to put bone side down first, and then after that, we turn it around to put the actual meaty side down. And now I'll sear it, and uh, in a few minutes should be ready. So after a few minutes, around five minutes, you will see that mylar reaction has already occurred and you can see the crust forming on the outside of the meat. That's what we want. Uh, at this point, when you have to put the onions, the carrots and everything, this is a crucial moment in your recipe, especially if you're going a slow cook, if you're doing stews and uh, thick sauces, because everybody uh, making cooking videos and a lot of books, they will say not to lose this uh, parts that get stuck to the bottom of the pan and they are absolutely right. Uh, these uh, ingredients here, they absorb a lot of the flavor. So do not miss the opportunity to infuse as much flavor as you can in this point of the recipe. So to give you an idea here, uh, I have already put the onion on. Now we have the celery, we have the carrots, we have the garlic. It's going to go bay leaves as well. I have some lemony thyme but uh, you will not, it will not stop there. I will also uh, go for rosemary and uh, cayenne pepper, smoked paprika. This will all go in right with these ingredients. So do not miss the opportunity to add a lot of flavor at this point. So as you can see at this moment, the liquid has evaporated and you can see the onions, the celery, the carrots, the garlic, all have absorbed a lot of flavor. So this part is really, really important. Let's set the meat back in. Do not lose the liquid that drops from the meat that also infuses a lot of flavor. Give it, give it a good mix. And I will close this for a minute while I go to take the chicken stock that I will add and will be the base for the gravy. Time for the chicken broth. Now, we made this chicken broth at home, but uh, you shouldn't uh, be too concerned. If you buy it at the supermarket, you will work just as well. We have added the chicken stock now, the broth, and uh, you will start to slow cook at this point. We'll close our Ninja slow cooker and we will, we will add the pressure. Very good time for you to prepare a coffee and sit back because this will take at least half hour. After 30 minutes of cooking in the pressure, the meat is almost ready. I will cook for a little bit more because I like it to be even softer than that, but it has good consistency. It is still quite liquid, so we will reduce a lot the consistency of this. We'll get thicker as we go forward. So we have made the passata during the week. So we have it in here. Let's add it. 
the passata we did is very consistent so it has the perfect consistency that I want for this dish let's set it to slow cook and I will put it on high for four hours which is the lowest amount that this slow cooker can do if you don't need the whole four hours you can set it down right after you started the program and then you will do just that I will set two hours for now and then uh, I'll open to check it at one hour and one hour and a half. Is it necessary, strictly necessary to leave it cooking and slow cooking for uh, two hours more? No, you could just uh, leave it in uh, pressure cooking for a few minutes more and you would get to there. It's not exactly the same result and that is the point here. When you are using a slow cooker, when you are doing stews, when you are doing this kind of recipe, one thing that I firmly believe in is the best ingredient is time. So to get that unforgettable taste that to really produce magic, you need to leave the time to do its magic, to reduce the sauce, concentrate the flavor, and that will make your dish stand out. More than two hours have, uh, have gone by and our dish is ready. The sauce is very thick, the color is fantastic. Uh, if you eat meat a lot, you will know that uh, beef ribs, the, this is specific cut, has a very distinct, distinct flavor, very different. And uh, you can, it's one of the cuts of beef that you kind of can recognize when you eat it. It's really, really good. I like a lot and I think it gets complemented very well by smoky flavors. That's why I chose Arbol uh, chili flakes and uh, smoked paprika on this one. And also the Kashmiri uh, pepper that I used has a kind of a, a sweet taste that I think that it goes very well with this cut and also with the, it kind of counteracts against the acidity of the tomato. We have removed the, the pot from the Ninja slow cooker and now I am going to transfer here to our, uh, to our final uh, serving dish. And then you can see how thick the sauce is. And this is one of the points that I wanted to share uh, with you all. That is the fact that it is literally fall off the bone. The meat is so tender that part of it, even the the fat that was holding it together kind of melt, melted away. So it really falls off the bone very, very easily. As you can see, there are the, the, big, the big pieces, only the, the bone is missing. In my opinion, it is a matter of personal, of personal preference. If you want to have it big like this, depending on what you're going to eat this with, or if you want to kind of just cut it up and uh, slice it a little bit, just like ragu would be. So uh, if you are having with pasta, for instance, I would have just like ragu, or if you're uh, going with rice like we are going today, then I see no problem leaving the big pieces on. I think uh, it has a, a very nice personality to it. So since I cut this as a ragu, let me try and taste it. Let's see, let's see how it goes. Mm. Melts in your mouth. You can feel that uh, uh, kick from the tomato uh, passata with the sweet and the smoky flavor, really fantastic, very complex, which I think only slow cooking will get you. So uh, it is really, really worth the wait. And in this case, cooking with the Ninja pot really helps because of several hours, you have uh, two or three actions that you have to be there, but most of the time you don't even look at it. A little bit of work in the beginning and then it's done. So really, really fantastic, loved it. And uh, well, I hope you enjoy it.